Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Trade. Trade connects you with new coffees made by some of the best roasters in the nation. Trade makes it super simple. You take the Trade coffee quiz, answer a few questions, and Trade will curate coffee selections that match your taste preferences, which is so great because there are so many great coffees out there, but they may not meet your criteria of a good coffee. So your coffee is roasted and shipped within 24 hours of ordering. It comes to you directly from the roaster shipped at peak freshness. Your coffee will arrive in compostable packaging and once you've tasted it, you rate it so that Trade can further tailor and hone your taste preferences to continue delighting you with great tasting coffee. This month I received Airship's Black Bear and it was lovely, nice and dark without being overly bitter, lots of chocolate notes, and just delicious served black. And Trade guarantees that you'll love your first coffee, but if you don't, they'll ship you out a different bag for free. So if you'd like to try Trade for yourself, be one of the first 100 people to click the link down below and use my code EMMYMADE50 to receive 50% off your first bag of coffee. Big thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video and for their continued support. Now today, I'm going to be making a bread that looks so lovely. It looks like a perfect cube. I hope to arrive at the same result, but we shall see. This original recipe comes from Apron. I'll put a link down below to their channel. And this bread looks so beautiful with its perfect facets. It's a six-sided cube of bread. It is shokupan. Shokupan is a Japanese-style bread of just sandwich bread that's white and lovely and very square. This one's a little bit different. There's no humping on the top of it. It's perfectly square and you need a special square tin, which I happen to have from my smooth bread experiment. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link down below to that video. So since I have this specialty pan, I thought, why not try making this beautiful loaf of bread? Now, shokupan is also known as Japanese milk bread or Hokkaido bread, and I've made that bread before, and it's lovely. It's an enriched bread made with milk, and it has a special technique that uses milk combined with flour to make a bit of a roux. This adds more moisture, it extends the life of the bread, it stays soft, it doesn't taste stale, it doesn't dry out. So we're going to make our paste first. In this bowl, I have 25 grams of bread flour and 40 milliliters of very hot whole milk. So if you need recipe conversions, I'll put a link down below to my website, which include a printable version of this recipe that has a little handy dandy converter. So we're gonna add the hot milk to the flour and mix this up. In Apron's video, this was a lot thicker, so I'm gonna microwave this for 10 seconds so it turns into a dough, actually kind of cooking the flour. So after 15 seconds in the microwave, it looks like this. So we want this to be an actual dough, which we will incorporate into the remaining dough. In my Japanese Hokkaido milk bread, we actually did this on the stove top, and it created more of a slurry not quite a thick dough like this. So this is slightly different, but same kind of concept. Now that we have a ball of dough, I'm gonna set this aside to allow it to cool. In this glass, I have another 40 milliliters of milk. This time it is lukewarm, so just a little above room temperature. And to that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of honey. Down below, I'll put a link to Emmy Made Extras, which is my site where I have my old beekeeping vlogs. I don't do the vlogs any longer, but I do still keep bees. I'm gonna stir that up, and that's going to feed our yeast. Don't want this milk to be too hot, otherwise you'll kill your yeast and your bread <laughs> won't rise. This is two and a half grams of instant yeast. Sprinkle that on top. Give that a little stir. And we're gonna set this aside so that the yeast can get active. Now we'll set that aside for a few minutes. In this bowl, I have 240 grams of bread flour, 15 grams of sugar, and two and a half grams of kosher salt. And now I'm gonna add that little dough that we made earlier. And I'm just gonna pinch little pieces of this into the flour. Now we're going to add that yeast mixture we made earlier. Mix that up. I just checked the recipe, I'm glad I did. I was supposed to add 140 milliliters of lukewarm milk, not just 40. So that's why my dough is so stiff. We're gonna add that in there. And we're gonna knead this until it's not as sticky. It looks terrible now, but 
<laughs> will come together. So to this beautiful ball of dough, we're going to add some butter. And this is 15 grams. Just mush this out and place the pats inside. Then fold them in and continue kneading. Alrighty, so just after about two or three minutes of working that butter in, our dough is beautifully supple. Smooth, look at that. So now we're gonna tuck all the sides in and we're gonna use our hands, kind of push the dough under to create a nice tight skin on the surface. And then I'm gonna just lightly oil my bowl here. Okay, place that in there. I'm gonna cover that with just a bit of plastic wrap. Now we're gonna place this in a warm spot to proof or rise for about an hour or until the dough ball doubles in size. I'm gonna pop mine into my oven. My oven has a proofing setting, which keeps it at 80 degrees, which is perfect for dough to rise. And here it is, doubled in size. Boop. <laughs> now we're gonna degas this, gently press this out. Remove some of the gas. Cut the dough in half. And we're going to turn it over, pinch it, draw the sides up, and again, shape it into a nice tight ball. Using your hands to kind of shovel it and tighten the skin around it. Now we need to let the dough rest for about 15 minutes and allow the ruling out process to be a little bit easier. <laughs> While we're waiting for our dough to rest, we're gonna go ahead and butter our baking pan. This is a 10 by 10 centimeter baking pan. It's used to make a Pullman loaf and it has this lid that goes on top. This has a non-stick coating, but for a little extra insurance and for some flavor, we're going to butter all surfaces, including the lid. This beautiful dough has now rested for 15 minutes. Look how stinking cute it is, so cute. A little bit of flour. Now we're gonna further degas this and shape it into a loaf. And I recently got this rolling pin, all these little dimples, and it's gonna help remove the gas from the dough. So we're just gonna roll it, look at that. So that 15 minutes allows the dough to rest a bit and makes it easier to roll out. Otherwise it tends to spring back on itself. Now, I've never used one of these dough before. Very evenly works out all the gas. Cool. Now we're going to fold the sides up, fold the side up, and we're gonna roll it out again. That gives us very even sides. And on this end, use your fingers to kind of thin it out so that when we seal it, it'll be less of a bulky piece there at the end. Beginning at the top here, I'm gonna start rolling this up nice and tight. And then right where it meets at the top, we're gonna to pinch the seam closed. and place it in our prepared pan and press it down into the bottom of the pan like that. And then we're gonna let this proof for another hour at room temperature or until this has doubled and filled up most of this container. And then we're gonna bake this in a preheated 370 degree Fahrenheit, 190 degrees Celsius oven for 30 to 35 minutes until it's nice and golden. We're going to unmold it and then we will taste it. Hopefully it'll be a beautiful, gorgeous cube. We shall see. Okay, my lovelies, I'll see you in, you know, an hour and a half or so. Okay, bye. Alrighty, my lovelies, here are my two cube breads. <laughs> and as you can see, they are not perfect cubes. There's the spiral and the bottoms look nice and cubish, nice and square, but the breads did not rise all the way to the top of the pan. Now I thought this might have something to do with how long I waited for these to proof. This loaf right here I baked first and I let this proof for an hour and 15 minutes and it did not rise up to the top. The second loaf I let rise for two full hours and it too 
did not rise all the way to the top of the pan. Now I'm not really sure why this happened. I followed the recipe. I used the right size pan. The bread looks beautiful. It's cooled completely and let's give it a taste. Before we taste this though, let's perform a little Frankenstein surgery here. Let's Voltron this, shall we? Let's just, if I cut this part like this, Look at the crumb inside. Squishy, squishy. Look, this is like the keto slice of bread. So stinking cute. Two become one. <laughs> <laughs> there is the cube bread. Da -da 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 -da. It's not perfect, but I'll take it. Look. Da -da -da. All joking aside, let's finally give our bread a taste. Here we go. The beautiful shokupan in the shape of a lovely square. Itadakimasu. Buttery, moist, chewy tender, fluffy, lovely. Mm -hmm. Delicious, absolutely delicious. As my memory serves me, it's very similar to the Hokkaido milk bread I made previously. This one tastes a little bit more butterier and maybe that's because we buttered the tin. So there you have it, my lovelies. That's how you can make a cube of bread. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and big thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video. Be one of the first 100 people to click the link down below and use my code EMMYMADE50 to receive 50% off your first bag of coffee. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Check my website out for a printable version of this recipe. Subscribe if you're not subbed already and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.